Ashley Rock reading Nora Roberts' book, Sea Swept, Chapter 20, and it's the last chapter. And then I'm going to bed because it's already late and my kids will be up early. A week could be a long time, Cam discovered. <sighs> Particularly when you had a great deal stuck in your crawl that you couldn't spit out. Help that he'd been able to pick fights with both Philippines in, but it wasn't quite the same as having a showdown with Anna. It helped, too. The beginning work on the hull of the boat took so much of his time and concentration. Couldn't afford to think about her when he was blinking. He thought of her anyway. He had a few bad moments. Imagine her running around on some Caribbean beach in that little bikini and having some over-muscular over tan type rubbing sunscreen on her back and buying her my ties. And he told himself that she'd gone off somewhere to lick her imaginary wounds. It was probably in some hotel room. Drapes down, sniffling into a hanky. <laughs> But that image didn't make him feel any better. When he got home from a full Saturday at the boatyard, he was ready for beer. Maybe two. He needs and headed straight for the refrigerator. That only popped up when Philip came in. Seth isn't with you. Over at Danny's. Kim guzzled from the beer to wash the sawdust out of him. Sandy's dropping him off later. Good. Philip got a beer from him, pal. Sit down. What? I got a letter from the insurance company this morning. Philip put out here. The gist is... They're stolen. Use a bunch of legal terms, cited clauses, but the upshot is they're casting doubt on cause of death and are continuing to investigate. Fuck that. Cheapskate bastards just don't want to sell a show out. The Nord camp kicked out a chair, wished with all his heart it had been Mackie. Making ease. I talked to our lawyer. Bill continued to He may start rethinking our friendship if I keep calling him on weekends. He says we have some choices. We can sit tight, let the insurance company continue to investigate. We can file a suit against them for a non-payment of claim. Let them keep their fucking money. I don't want it anyway. No. Ethan spoke quietly. Hicko came to Albers. Getting his beard into his beard. She can say, this is not right. Dad paid the premiums year after year. He added to the policy for Seth. It's not right that they don't pay. If they don't pay, it's going to go down somewhere. That he killed himself. That's not right either. They've been doing all the pushing up till now. He had to raise his own Let's push back. If it ends up going to court, it could get messy. So we turn away from a fight. So we turn away from a fight because it could get messy. For the first time, he's been flickered over Ethan's face. We turn away from a fight because it could get messy. For the first time, amusement flickered over to Ethan's face. Well, fuck that. Cam? Cam's in the way. I've been waiting. I've been wanting a good fight for a while. I guess this is it. Then we're agreed. We'll have the papers drawn up next week, and we'll go after their asses. Revved and ready, Philip flipped at his bottle. Here's a, here's a good fight. Here's the winning. Cam corrected. I'm for that. It's going to cost the sum. Feel about fine fees, legal fees. Most of the capital was pulled in, sunk in the business. Blah, blah, blah. Guess we need another pool. With well, less regret than he expected, came thought of his beloved Porsche. Waiting patiently for him a nice, just a car, he told himself. Just a damn car. I can get my hands on some fresh crash. It'll take a couple of days. I can sell my house. He's in charge. I've had some people asking about it. It's just sitting there. No. The thought of it twisted in games. Man. You're not selling your house. Run it out. We'll get through this. I've got some stocks. Philip sighed and waved goodbye to a chunk of his growing portfolio. So my broker to cash them in. We'll open a joint account next week. The Quinn Legal Defense Fund. Three of them managed weeks from The kid ought to know. He said, if we're going to take this to the wall, you ought to know what's going on. Can looked up in time to see both of his brothers. I spoke to him. Oh, come on. Why does it have to be me? You're the oldest. Philip grinned at him. Besides, don't take your mind off Anna. I'm not burdened about her or any or any woman. Been edgy and broody all week. Either one. Making me nuts. Who asked you? We had a little disagreement, that's all. I'm giving her time to simmer now. Seems to me she simmered down to frozen the last time I saw her. Philip slammed into his beer. That was a week ago. It's my business how I handle a woman. Sure it is. Well, let me know when you're done with her, will you? She's Philip broke off when Cam all but leaped over the table, grabs it by the throat. Beer bottles flew and shattered on the floor. Resigned. Ethan wrecked his head 
hand through his hair, scraping drops of spilled beer. Kim and Philip were on the floor, pounding hell out of each other. He got himself a fresh beer before he filled a pitcher with cold water. His work boots crunched over broken glass, which kicked off the way in hopes that he wouldn't have to run anybody to the hospital for stitches. With malice toward neither, he looked at the picture and both of his brothers got their attention. Philip's lip was split. Cam's ribs thumb and both of them were bleeding from rolling around on broken glass. Drenched and panting, they eyed each other warmly, gingerly. Philip wiped the knuckle over his bloody lip. Sorry. Bad joke. I didn't know things were serious between you. I never said they were serious. Philip laughed and then winced as wet. Lip, lip wet. Brother, did you ever... I guess I never figured you'd be the first one of us to fall in love with a woman. The stomach that Philip's fist had abused Ginger wildly. Who said I'm in love with her? You didn't punch me in the face because you're in like. He looked down on a sweet sack. Shit. Do you know how hard it is to get blood stains out of a cotton blend? He rose out on hand hand. She's a terrific lady. He said as he all came with me. I hope you're working out. I don't have to work out or anything. Kim said this one. You're way off here. If you say so, I'm going to get cleaned up. He hit it out, limping only a little. I ain't mopping the damn floor, you can say, because your glands got in an uproar. Are you started at Camp Hunter, not caring how ridiculous it sounded. No, I figured you did. It was whatever you did to piss Santa off. He then opened the broom closet, took out a mop, and tossed it to Cam. Now I guess you can got to clean it up. He slipped out the back door. <laughs> the two of you think you know... So goddamn much. Fury used to kick the chair up from his way to fetch a bucket. I don't know what's going on in my own life. Insanity. That's what. I should be in Australia. Preparing for the rest of my life. That's where I should be. Dragged him off through water, beer, glass of blood, muttering himself. Australia's just where I'd be if I had any sense left. Name woman's complicating things. Better off just cutting loose there. He kicked over another chair. Cause it felt good. Let's shard some glass from the muff in the bucket. Who had a who had a fight? Says so wanna know. Came to two turned in narrow eyes at the boy standing in the door. I kicked Philip's ass. What for? Because I wanted to. What's an odd says walking around the puddle. Got a Pepsi out of the fridge. She kicked his ass. How come you're bleeding? Maybe I like to bleed. He finished mopping up while the boy stood by him. What's your problem? Came to a minute. I got no problem. Came showed the bucket side with his foot. At least Philip could do was empty it somewhere. He went to the sink, bad temperly, picked glass out of his arm. Then he got out the whiskey, right out of the chair, sat down with a bottle and a glass. He saw Sus eyes slide over the bottle and away. The little brother came forward, two fingers of Johnny Walker and a glass. Not everybody who gets everybody who drinks gets drunk, he said. Not everybody who gets drunk, as I may decide to do, knocks the kids around. Don't know why anybody drinks that shit anyway. Came back, back to whiskey, because we're weak and stupid. Feels good at the time. Are you going to Australia? Came for another. Doesn't look like him. I don't care if you care. Go. I don't care where the hell you go. The underlying fear in the boy's voice surprised them both. Flash it, sat there and raced out the war. Well, hell. Camp sought. Shoved the whiskey aside. He pushed away from the table. Hit the door and set streets across the yard to the woods. Hold it. Well, that didn't slow the boy down. Can't put some meaning in it. God damn it. I said hold it. This time Seth skidded to a halt. When he turned around, they stared at each other across the expansion of grass, temper and nerves vibrating from them all above his voice. Get your butt back here now. He came, fist clenched, chin jutting up. Both knew he had no room. I don't need you. Oh, hell you don't. I'd have kicked your ass for being stupid. Everybody says you've got some genius brain in there. But if you ask me, you're dumb as dirt. Now sit down. There. He had a jump a finger at the steps. If you don't do what I tell you when I tell you, I might just kick your ass after all. You don't scare me, says said buddy sat. Scary white. That gives me the hammer. Cam said as well. Watch the puppy come crawling toward him on his belly. And a, a scare. A little dog's too. He's on disgust. I'm not going anywhere. He began. I said I don't care. Fine, but I'm telling you anyway. I figured I would. Once everything settled down, I told myself I would. I guess I needed to. Never figured on coming back here to stay. Then why don't you go? Kim gave him a heartfelt boot on the top of his head with the heel of his head. Heel of one hand. Why don't you shut up until I say what I have to say? The painless smack and impatient order were more comforting to set than a thousand promises. When coming to the fact that I've been running long enough, I like what I was doing while I was doing it, but I guess I'm pretty well finished with it. Looks like I've got a place here, business here, maybe a woman here. 
Hey, my we're taking a banner. So you're staying at work and poking a girl. Those are damn good reasons for hanging in one place. Then there's you. Can't leave back on the other side. I can't say I care much for you when I first came back. There's that crappy attitude of yours. And you're ugly. Did you kind of grow on a guy? And Missy cheered, Sesame. You're uglier. I'm bigger. I'm entitled. So I guess I'll hang around to see if you get any prettier as time goes on. I didn't really want you to go. Says so sat on his bed during a long moment. So close as he could get to speak in his heart. I know. Came to <sighs> now that we've got that settled, we've got this other thing. Nothing to worry about. It's just some legal bullshit. Feeling the lawyer handle most of it. But there might be some talk you shouldn't pay any attention to it if you hear what kind of talk? Some people, some idiots think dad aimed for the bull, killed himself. Yeah. Now this asshole from the insurance company is asking questions. Kim hissed out of breath. You know you should probably tell the kid not to call Darts asshole, but there were bigger issues. You knew that. Sure, it goes around. Talked to Danny and Will's mom. Danny said she gave him an earful. She didn't like some guy coming around asking questions about Ray. That butthead Chuck up at the Dairy Queen told the detective guy that Ray was screwing around with the students. Then had a crisis of conscience to kill himself. Crisis of conscience? Jesus, where did the kid come up with this stuff? Chuck Kimball. He always was a butthead. Where does he got cheating on a lit exam? Got booted out of college, and it seems to me Philip beat the crap out of him once. Can't remember why, though. He's got a face like a carp. Cam left. Here goes the dust. Dad, Ray, never touched a student set. He was square with me. That counter for everything. My mother. Go ahead. Came wrong. She told me. He was my father. But another time, she said the other guy was. Once when she was really loaded, she said my old man was some guy named Keith Richardson. Cam couldn't help it. The laugh just popped up. Jesus. Now she's hitting on the stones. Who? I'll see you to your music education later. I don't know who phrased my father. Self looked up. She's a liar. So don't go with anything she said. But he took me. I know he gave her money. A lot of it. I don't know if it had told me if it was. <laughs> He said there were things we had to talk about, but he had stuff to work out first. I know you don't want him to be. You couldn't matter. You couldn't matter. Cam realized not. Do you want him to be? He was decent. The boy said so simple. The cam dripped an arm around his shoulder. Says Lincoln. Yeah, he was. Everything had changed. Everything was different, and he was desperate to tell her. Cam knew his life had turned on its axis yet again. And something he ended up. And somehow he ended up exactly where he needed to be. The only thing missing was Anna. Took a chance and drove to her apartment. It was Saturday night, he thought. She was due back at work on Monday. She was a practical woman and would want to take Sunday to catch up. Sort her laundry. Answer her mail. Whatever. She wasn't home. He was going to be good. He was going to, by God, sit on her doorstep till she got there. But when she answered his knock and stood there looking so fresh, so gorgeous, he was caught off balance. Anna, on the other hand, prepared for this meeting all week. She knew exactly how she could handle it. Cam, this is a price. He just caught me. Caught you? Yes, yeah, stupid. He said stupidly. Yes, but I've got a few minutes. Would you like to come in? Yeah, I will. I. Where the hell have you been? <laughs> she looked at her boss. Excuse me. You took off out of the blue. I wouldn't say that. I arranged to leave, I arranged to leave for work. Checked in with my neighbors. Had my plants water while I was gone. I was hardly abducted by aliens. I simply took a few days of personal time. Do you want some coffee? No. Okay. He thought she was going to keep playing it cool. He could do that. I want to talk to you. That's good because I want to talk to you. How's Seth? He's fine. Really. We've got a lot of things ironed out just today. What have you done to your arm? Impatient. It's down through all Nixon's script. Nothing. It's nothing. Listen, Anna. Why don't you sit down? I'd really like to apologize if, if I was hard on you last week. Apologize? Well, that was more like it. Well, be forgiven, he said. Also, why don't we just forget it? I've got a lot to tell you. I'd really like to clear this up. Smiling pleasantly, sat across from him. I suppose we were both in different positions. A great deal of that was my fault. Becoming involved with you was a calculated risk, but it was attractive and didn't weigh the potential problems as carefully as I should have. Obviously, something like last weekend's disagreement was bound to happen, and as we both have such interests at heart and will continue to, I would hate for us to be at odds. Good, then we won't. He reached for a hand, but she evaded his gesture and merely patted his. Now that's settled, you can really have to excuse me. I have to rush you along, Cam, but I have a date. A what? A date? She glanced at her watch on her wrist. Shortly, 
as it happens, then I have to change very slowly. God, just be, you have a date tonight. What the hell is that supposed to mean? What it generally does, she blinked twice, as if confused, then let her eyes fill with apology. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we both understood that we ended the, well, the more personal aspect of our relationship. I assumed it was clear that it wasn't working out for either of us. It was though someone had blown past his guard, ran an iron fist in their soul place. Look, if you're still pissed off. Do I look pissed off? She asked coldly. No. He stared at her, shaking his head while his stomach did a quick pitch and roll. No, you don't. You're dumping me. Don't be melodramatic. We're simply ending an affair that both of us entered freely and without promises or expectations. It was good while it lasted. Really good. I'd hate to spoil that. Now, as far as our professional relationship goes, I told you that I'll do all I can to support your permanent guardianship for Seth. However, I do expect you to be more forthcoming with information from now on. I'll also be happy to consult with you on advertise you on any area of that guardianship. You and your brothers are doing a marvelous job with him. He waited, certain there would be more. That's it. I can't think of anything else, and I am a little pressed for time. You're pressed for time. She just stabbed him dead center of the heart. She she was pressure. That's too damn bad because I'm not finished. I'm sorry if your ego's bruised. Yeah, my ego's bruised. I got a lot of bruises right now. Hell, how the hell can you stand there and brush me off after what we had together? We had great sex. I'm not denying it. We're just not going to have any long sex. He grabbed her arms and shook her. That's a small satisfaction to see the flash of anger here. Heat through the chill house. That's all it was for you. That's what it was for both of us. It was going to... Wasn't well, going the way she planned. She expected him to be angry and storm out. Be relieved. She backed away first and walked away whistling. But he wasn't supposed to confront her like this. Let go of me. The hell I will. I've been half crazy for you to get back. You turn my life upside down. And I'll be damned if you'll just throw away because you threw with me. We're through with each other. I don't want you anymore. It's your bad luck. I said it first. So take your hands off me. He, he released her if her skin had burned his palm. There's been a hitch in her voice. Special. What makes you think I'd upset it at all? We don't want the same things. We are going nowhere. And I'm not going to keep heading there. No matter how I feel about you. How do you feel about me? Tired of you, she shouted. Tired of me? Tired of us. Sick and tired of telling myself fun and games could be enough. Well, it's not. Not nearly. And I want you out. He felt the temper panic that had gripped him knees back into the light. You're in love with me, aren't you? He'd never seen a woman go from simmer to boil to so fast. And seeing it, he wondered why. Taking him so long to realize he adored her. She whirled, grabbing a lamp and hurled it. He gave her credit for aim. Gave thanks that he was light on his feet. As the base whisked by his head. Before crashing to the wall. You arrogant, conceited, cold-blooded son of a bitch. She grabbed the base now. New one she'd bought on the way home to cheer herself up. She left to fly. Jesus, Anna. <laughs> His admiration, pure and simple. That burst through him as he was forced to catch the base. Forced smashing his face. You must be nuts about me. I despise you. She looked frantically for something else to throw at him. Snagged a bowl of fruit off the kitchen table. Fruit went first. Apples. Loathe you. Pears. Hate you. Bananas. I can't believe I ever let you touch me. Then the bowl. But she was more clever this time. Fame first. Then heaved in the direction of his dodge. Snowmore caught him just above the ear. And had stars spinning in front of his eyes. Okay. Game over. He made a dive for her. Caught her around the waist. He already abused his already abused body. She suffered from kicks and punches. But he held her to the couch. and her, Get a hold of yourself before you kill me. I want to kill you, she said between her to Believe me, I get the picture. You don't get anything? She bucked under her, said his system in a tangled mess of less than laughter. Says it both. She reared up and bit him hard. Ouch. God damn it. Okay, that's it. He dragged her up and threw her. And threw her over his shoulder. Uh, you still packed? Tell me she's got a damn date. Like hell she does. Tells me we're finished. What bullshit? He marched her into the bedroom, started back on the bed and grabbed it. What are you doing? Put me down. Put that down. I'm not letting loose of either until we're in Vegas. Vegas? Las Vegas? Instead of both pistols. I'm not going anywhere with you. Las, Las Vegas. That's exactly where we're going. It's the quickest place to get married. And I'm in a hurry. And how the hell do you expect to get me on a plane when I'm screaming my lungs out? I'll have you in jail in five minutes flat. And I had his wits in because she was inflicting considerable damage. He dumped her at the front door. No wrong. We're getting married. And that's the end of it. We can't just... Her body sagged. Married? 
the worst father Peter should ever. He don't want to get married. Believe me, I've been rethinking the idea since you beamed me with a fruit bowl. Now, are you going to come along reasonably, or do I have to seduce you, sedate you? Please let me go. And, uh, he loaded his brother. Don't ask me to do that, because I don't think I can live without you. Take a chance, roll the dice. Come with me. You're angry and you're hurt, she said gently. And you think rushing off to Vegas to have some wild, plastic-coated instant marriage is going to fix everything? He framed her face gently now. Tears were shimmering in her eyes, and he knew he'd be on his knees if she let them small. You can't tell me you don't love me. I won't believe you. Oh, I'm in love with you, Cam, but I'll survive. There are things I need. I had to be honest with myself and admit that. You broke my heart. I know. Press his lips for it. I know I did. I was short-sighted. I was selfish. I was stupid. And damn it, I was scared of me, of you, of everything that was going on around me. I messed it up, and now you don't want to give me another chance. It's not a matter of chances. It's a matter of being practical enough to admit that we want different things. I finally figured out today what it is I want. Tell me what you want. I want a home. He had one for her, he thought. I want marriage. And he just asked her. I want children. How many? How many? Her tears dried up. She shoved him. It isn't a joke. I'm not joking. I was thinking two with an option for three. His mouth quirked at the look of blank eyed shock on her face. There. Now you're getting scared. Because you're beginning to realize I'm serious. You. You're going you're gonna back to Rome. Or wherever. As soon as you can. We can go to Rome. Or wherever. On a honeymoon, I'm not taking the kid. I draw the line there. Might like, I might like to get in a couple races from time to time, just to keep my hand in. But basically, I'm in the bull building business. Of course, I might go belly up. Then you'd be stuck with a house husband who really hates housework. She wanted to press her fingers to her temples. We still had a hold of her hand, arms. I can't think. Good. Just listen. You cut a hole in me when you left, Anna. I would not admit it, but it was there, big and empty. Here's his bro on her heart on hers for a moment. You know what I did today? I worked on building a boat. It felt good. I came home, the only home I've ever had. I did feel right. Had a family meeting, decided that we'd take on the insurance company and do what's right for our father. By the way I've been by the way, I've been talking to him. She could stop staring at him even though her head was really What who? My father had some conversations with him. Three of them since he died. He looks good. Your breath was clogged right at the base of her Cam! Yeah, yeah, he said it was good. I need counseling. We can talk about that later. Didn't mean to get off track. I was telling you what I did today, right? Very slowly, she nodded. Yes. Okay, after the meeting, Phil made some smart remarks, so I punched him. We beat on each other for a bit. That felt good, too. Then I talked to Seth about things I should have talked to him about before. And I listened to him the way I should have listened before. Then we just sat for a while. That felt good, Anna. And it felt right. Her lips scared. I'm glad. There's more. I knew when I was sitting there that there was where I wanted to be, needed to be. Only one thing was missing. And that was you. So I came to find you. Take you back. He pressed his lips gently to her for To take you home, Anna. I think I want to sit down. No. I want your knees weak when I tell you I love you. Are you ready? God. I've been real careful. Never tell a woman I loved her, except my mother. I didn't tell her often enough. Take a chance on me, Anna, and I'll tell you as often as you can stand here and it. Shifted around. I'll not get married in Vegas. Spoils bored. <laughs> he watched her lips bow up before he closes over them. The taste of her soothed every ache in his body. So, God, I miss you. Don't go away again. <laughs> it brought you to your senses. She wrapped her arms tight around him. And it felt good. She's not good. Like, it felt right. Oh, Cam. I want to hear it right now. I love you. Feels so damn perfect loving you. I can't believe I wasted so much time. Less than three months, she reminded him. Too much time. But we'll make up for it. I want you to take me home, she muttered. After. He's back, Cockney said. After what? They made her laugh by lifting her in his arms. Picked his way through the wreckage. Kicked a very sad looking banana out of the way. You know, I can't figure out why I used to think marriage would be boring. Ours won't be. She kissed his bruised head. It's still bleeding a little. Promise. The end of the book.